Hello and welcome today to my channel, The Social Canvas with me, Carol. I'm going to be showing you today how to paint this tiny painting, which I've kind of named Seagulls by the Sea, but it's, you know, it's simple, it's fun, it's great for beginners, and I hope you can enjoy and join in. Um, please remember to subscribe if you haven't already to my channel, if you want to get more upcoming uh, free tutorials. Uh, there should be a little button on the screen and please leave a comment if you can. And if you would like to show me your end product paintings, go to the Social Canvas UK on Facebook uh, or send me an email at the info at the socialcanvas.co.uk. Wonderful. Well, today I'm using acrylic paints, but if you want to join in and you're using something like watercolors, pencil, water pencil, pencils, anything really, just enjoy it. That's all you have to do is relax. And I always call this a paint and sip, which I've got my cup of tea today. So a lovely cup of tea. So if you didn't know already, I do uh, once a week uh, paint and sip evening tutorials, which are much longer. Uh, you know, I do charge a small fee, but not much. So um, they're much more interactive as in, you know, I do Zoom and I do YouTube and um, um, usually they last around an hour and a half or so long, but they're much larger paintings and more um, in-depth paintings. But I want to make this simple for now, so let's let's get started. Okay, you won't need an awful lot of colours. I've got blue, I've got green, I've got white, and I've got a little bit of uh, yellow, or you can use yellow okra, and a little bit of black and white for the birds here. A uh, tiny bit of red if you want to on that. Uh, I'm going to use a uh, angled brush, a small angled brush. Whoops, if you can see that. It's a number four, I believe. First of all, I'm going to start with, sorry, the sand, because it's the lightest colour. I try and start with the lightest colour. If you don't have a yellow ochre, you can just use yellow and put a touch of red in with it. But you want to start with the white, a clean white, if you can. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre, but as I said, if you want to use a little bit of red, and a little bit of um, yellow, you should get to a similar tone. So you get to a sandy tone. Doesn't matter if there's different variations of tone in that. So I'm just going to do, as you can see, I'm just painting on a canvas paint paper here, rather than a um, canvas um, box canvas but whatever you've got works. If you want to display it on your wall, it's nice to have a box canvas and you don't have to frame it. Um, but um, I'm just showing you on the paper because it's easier for me to do that, of course. Um, this is just sitting here loose. This is my example so that you can see it. So I'm not going to go right up to the painting. I'm just going to leave it loose at the sides there. But of course, if you're painting on the canvas, you want to go right to the edges or paper, then you can do so. But either way, it's good. Try and cover. I'm going to try and cover my white background a little bit anyway. So I don't like to leave that loose. So I'm going to come up to about there. Of course, these are going to go on the top, so. A little bit doesn't matter quite so much. Slightly different colour, you see. If you were using yellow and tiny bit of red in there um, with white, then you'd come up with more of a yellow, low, yellowish tone like that. Okay, so I'm going to wash my brush off. And next, I'm actually going to start with some blue. So I've got a blue tone here. Any blue will do, as they say. I'll start with a little bit of white and with my blue. I'm going to wet my brush plenty. And I'm going to go from side to side along the top here with my blue. You have to get a lot more water on your brush. Should go on reasonably smooth. going to add a little bit of white now because I want it to tone out as it gets towards the water. 
because usually on the horizon it's a little bit lighter. So just blend in that in. If you go um, back into the line at the top, you, what you'll see is it blends a lot better rather than just sits there <clears throat> with a straight line. Ignore my edge though, because that's only because I'm not going straight up to an edge on this one. Although I do want to get that back in there, so let me just paint that edge a little bit better than that. So I'll come down a little bit further, so I'll add some more white in there. So yeah, acrylic paint dries very quickly, depends on how thick, of course, you put it on, but um, uh, so it's easy to work with and hard to work with at the same time because you can't manipulate it like you can oils for instance and you can play around with oils a lot better and blend them oils do take an awful long time to dry though so if you're a beginner i would not recommend oils at this stage but when you get confident and you want to try them out love oils are so so nice to work with. I'm just finishing that line off there. All right, so now I'm washing that off again. Grab a little bit more white on my palette. I'm just using a tear off palette, but if you've got a paper plate, plastic plate, anything like that will do. Um, they're easily, you can wash them off pretty easily. Okay, so here I'm going to go for a quite darker green to begin with. So I'm going to grab my green to the side. This is called um, just mid-green. And I'm going to grab some blue with it because I want it to be the horizon line to be a little bit darker. So just a little bit of blue with that, which is cyan blue, I believe, to get a slightly darker blue. And now she'll graduate that. Again, I want it reasonably wet. Not dripping wet, but wet on my palette. So, you know, if you if you have a problem making a straight line, then you you can always pencil it out with a, a ruler to keep mine reasonably straight. But that's the good thing about the angled brush. You lead with your lower edge, and it gives you a, a better straight line. So, top tip there: get an angled brush. And I do sell them, so uh, go on to the website at socialcanvas.co.uk on to our art supplies on the top tab and you will see them. Two packs there actually. So there's quite a dark green going on there now. I'm going to add just a small amount of white to it. I'm going along and it doesn't matter if you again blend that with the top just go back into it and blend it a little bit slightly different tones to this one but I don't expect it to be the same I try not to copy exactly Be careful of what's on your brush if you haven't brushed it out already. You might have a different colour on there. And in that case, whoops, you'll get all sorts of colours coming off there. Okay, a little bit more water will help me along. You can go back in and put some elements of the darker green in there as well if you want to. Well, as I say, it's your choice if you're painting along with me. Like I say, I'm not really taking too much notice of my line there because I'm not going up to the edge so much in this. And I've got a cat in the background that's meowing, so excuse my kitty. That would be Miss Zoe. <laughs> Going 
going to grab a lot more white now on my brush as I get down to the water's edge. So it's softening right down to the water's edge. And I'm leaving it loose because I'm grabbing the white so it looks like the edge of the, um, you know, where you get the water coming in. And it's frothier, so to speak. You can just put some frothy bits in. You're not going to see all this once you get the posts in, so don't worry too much about it. Just where it's crashing to the shore a little bit. Again, it doesn't matter if also you bring your green down a little bit below that, and like it's rounding out a little bit on the sides there as well. Don't have to be straight because of the way the water's coming in. You can just bring it in like that. Just a loose edge there. You can also put some white caps in the water here as well if you want to, like that. I wasn't going to do that, but now I've done it. Just to show you, if you want to put those in. To make these white, you might have to go over them a couple of times, but that's up to you as well. You cut a little circles. You can also use your finger if you want to blend in. Okay, so do I have to wait for that to dry in order to um, try not to dip your uh, brush in your tea if you're drinking tea like me? Do I have to wait for that to dry? But just in, in while we're waiting, because I do actually have that on quite thick, so I'm not going to have to wipe that off a little bit, um, you will need a brown, brown, a bit of yellow and white. Uh, a bit of red might uh, be handy too for the posts. If you want to just do one post, you can do one. I've got three just because I've got three, but I'm just going to take a little bit of that white off there because I might not be able to put it on a little bit too thick. I won't be able to go over it so quick, quick and easy. So let me just dry that off best I can. Again, if you haven't got a steady hand, you can always. Um, get a ruler out and, and um, draw those in. So as I said I'm going to grab some brown, straight brown on my brush like so, make it a little bit wet again. Just want a brown edge. To line them out. I don't want it too strong of an edge. As you can see I don't really have one on this side so Okay, I'm still quite wet on that side, so I may just go and do my, I think I could probably manage it. Okay, I'm going to do one in the middle, and you can see I want my, I really want my top post to be sort of above the horizon line, so it's easier to do the seagulls. So I'm going to start here, I'm going to lean my little finger on a little bit, see how straight I can get. That guides me, as long as it's not wet. And then I'm coming straight down, disappearing because it's a tall post. So, okay, so that's got my middle one guided in. And then on the other side, I'm just gonna, I'm not actually gonna paint all of this in, I'm just gonna put a slight edge because I don't want, maybe it's the light that's coming from that side, so it's not so evident on that side. Okay, so I've got that in. And then I'm going to go to this one. This one's a little bit lower. Probably about there. Again, guiding it down. I'm not going to do the top yet. And then this one this side as well. I'm trying to keep them spaced roughly the same apart because they're part of a 
I guess a fence of some kind in the in the foreground there. All right. Okay. So I've lined out those. I do have a little bit of black, I think, lurking in my. Of course, I do need some for the seagulls anyway. So I'm just going to splash my bit of a little bit of black out on my palette. Don't need a lot. First of all, though, I am going to paint in this area. Now, it may be tough to cover these colours, so what I suggest you do is get some white, plenty of white on your brush. Put a little bit of brown, doesn't matter if you use yellow okra brown, as you can see there's different colours in the wood there, but plenty of white in will help cover. And you may have to go over it a couple of times, but I'm going to start with the middle one because that's the one that needs to be covered the most. As you can see this has come out quite light but that's okay because I can go over as many times and you can leave the top quite rough edge because obviously it's a sawn off kind of piece of wood or, or a uh, not sawn off what is the I suppose you could say weather weather uh, torn piece of wood weather worn that was that was the I knew it was something like that weather worn piece of wood Okay, so I've gone to a bit of brown now, as you can see. So I've added another dimension to my colour by adding brown in there. Get some more water on my brush. The joy of these videos is, if I'm going too fast for you, you can stop. Fast forward, rewind, watch again, etc. So... You can put little knots in your posts or lines where the ridges have sort of become deeper. I don't know if you can hear that. It sounds like a baby, but it's actually my cat in the background. I don't know. She always does this when I'm painting. Strangely enough. Put a little, a couple of little kind of line bits coming in there like that. Maybe a bit down here. I think on this edge I'm going to go a little bit darker. Add a little bit of brown black in that side because that's the uh, in the shade side like that. I'll weigh up a bit more because that's very light up there. And on the edges, I'm just going to bring a couple of, use the edge of your brush and just bring a couple of those, just so it looks like a, a rough edge on the top there. Okay, that's the first one done. So we're going to do the same on the other ones. Again, I'm grabbing a little bit more white on my brush to begin with so I can cover that area. Put as many different accents on when you're ready. Try and do mine as I'm going along. Grab some brown again. Put a little bit of yellow okra back in. Oops, not my tea. Do not dip in your tea. <laughs> A little bit of yellow okra on there that gives it a bit of a yellowed look, which is nice. Or you can do your yellow that you had before, of course, as well. All sorts of opportunities to make it different. A little bit light there, then. A little bit lighter than I intended on that bit. Okay, a little bit more darker on this one, I think. You can brush it in on your flat side. Oops. Make sure you don't get big blobs on your brush. I'm going to the top. 
top of this again, just to give it a bit more of a rough look at the top. And then my final one. I like this brush because you can use it on both sides and get your flat side going more. The bigger areas you can get covered quickly. And then of course your angled side you can use nice, you can use it to make nice neat lines. to get some bit more of a line on that top there. Doesn't matter if you do like, you know, thicker brown lines, they don't all have to be thin lines. You want to do a knot, I would just use a small brush for a knot, for instance which mm, I have one here somewhere. Very, 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 very tiny brush. You can hardly see it. But it's easier to do the knot with. I'm just going to grab a little bit of black in with my brown to get it to show up well. And I'll just roll my brush. And I'm just going to get a little knot by just doing a little round, kind of like that. Maybe a bit thicker in places. It's kind of like a knot. Kind of. To make it elongated knot, so to speak. Don't want it too perfect. <laughs> so yeah, I've got one knot there. I might do a little one here. And the one there. There's my knots. Lovely. Okay, next I'm not going to go to uh, my rope until that's dry, so I'm going to go to my seagulls next. So I'm going to use my small brush just because it's easier to get the perimeter. I'm going to put that one in the water. We don't want that drying out. So I'm going to get a little bit of black to begin with. Roll my brush. It's quite wet because I don't want it to run out too quickly. First of all, uh, I'm going to do um, this guy's legs. So I'm going to put perch him right on the end of there because I don't have an awful lot of room. It's got quite long legs. Obviously one's slightly longer than the other because of the angle. Can't see his feet. They're kind of like somewhere in there. Best not to do the feet, to be honest. <laughs> it's much easier not to do the feet. Okay, so I'm going to come... I'm going to just do the angle like that for a start because it's easier to get going once you've got an angle in. And then I'm going to come up. And his neck sort of coming like that. Need a bit more water on my brush. It's getting dry already. Oops. Don't worry if you've got a thick line like I've I've got because you can always cover that up. So, so when you come up here, you need to round out his head. Kind of like an oval looking head, and then his neck's coming down like that and then his back's going out quite a bit to get to his tail like that and his tail is kind of like you know, it's not a perfect shape it's got raggedy bits on the end as it's coming out and then where his um, wing is so to speak is it's kind of a, again a rough sort of edge coming down I'm going to put a little bit of white in with that because I don't want it too black black. I want it a little bit. If I have it too black all the way, I want some different tones in here. So I'll just go on with a little grey. I can always add in a bit of black on top 
fact, I'm going to just add a little bit more black on the top part of his body. Like that. And I'll leave that for now until I've got the white in. And go to my other little guy up there. They're kind of looking as if to say, where's that guy gone? <laughs> There's only two of them. Okay, make sure you're dry if you're going to lean on your canvas. So this guy is, his legs are kind of coming slightly at a different angle. I'm going in like that and then meeting in the middle, a bit like a V really, isn't it? And then again, I'm going to do this bit first. So I just find it easier to get my bearings. And then he's kind of looking round, so I'm going to start at his head. Slight curve, but then round it out again. I've got a thick line there, but it's better for you to see it probably. So round that out because he's kind of got his head looking that way. Like that, and then I'm bringing his. I'm going to start with his wing on this one again. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight, but bring that bit down like that. I'm going to paint that in. It's not easy to paint in with a very small brush, but fortunately, it's not a big area, so it's okay. Someone's got a loud car out there. Okay, just gonna round this guy off a little bit on his back. He was having a slightly bigger back than the other guy. Okay, so now then, I'm not gonna do his beak until the end, so I'm gonna wash that one off. I'm go to a slightly bigger brush to, um... now I've got a little square one here tiny or a little round one. You can use either one of those. I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to use I think the square one just to see how it works out. I'm going to put straight white in and I'm just going to, if you want to go over any thick lines, now's the time to do it. I'm just going to paint this in. I think actually the smaller one might have worked out better than this one, but you know, I wanted to try it out. So what you have to do, try different brushes to see what suits you and how you work with it. I get rid of my thick black line here and just go right up to the edge. If you find your white's not covering very well, you can give it another coat. I just tend to do that on a dark background. It depends on the quality of the paints, really. I don't need to do that. I'm going to just get a touch of black on my brush because on the underside, I'm just going to give it a touch of grey. That's just really where the shadow is. I'll do the same on this guy here, just a touch. Maybe up that side. It's still wet mine, so be careful you don't pour your paint off when you're doing it. Just a touch. I might put a little, whoops, darker grey in there too, just to give it some dimension, as I said. All right. Now, as you can see, my legs has kind of faded out a little bit at the bottom, so I'm going to grab a little bit more white on my brush with the grey. Very subtle. And just at the bottom part of the legs, I'm just going to touch on it a little bit. Again, where his legs are darkest, that's where the shadow of his underbelly is. Or her, as the case may be. So, it makes a little bit of difference. I know it's only subtle, but it does make a difference. Wow, okay. Nearly there. This is all nice and dry now. Should be.
she says. <laughs> no, it should be nice and dry. Okay, so while I'm waiting for this to dry, and I don't want to do his beak and his eyes until that's dry, so let's do the rope. Again, any brush will do, small one, medium one. I'm actually going to go to the small round brush. This is a number four, Dala Rowney graduate. Another noisy car outside. I'm going to grab mostly white to start off with, then I'm going to put my colours on the top. So I'm just grabbing that white. It doesn't matter if you've got a touch of the brown in there, but it just it's going to cover a lot better. So with this, I'm going to start on the edge and I'm going to give it a sort of look like it's coming from behind. And I'm going to just bring that straight across. Oops. And it's coming off the edge of your canvas if you've got one, if that's what you're working with. And then I can put the tones on top. And again, they don't have to be all the same. You can have them twisted if you want to. You know, one's going down a bit maybe. Really doesn't matter. Just being pulled from the side somewhere. And this one's maybe. This one's coming up to me that one a bit more. Okay, so once you've got your white in, then you can start playing with the colours on those. Again, I did have the yellow and red out, got too much out actually. I'm going to make a slight orange. I'm going to rub a little bit of that white into it because I don't want it too orange. And I'm going to put sort of, um, well, actually, a little bit more red might, might be good. Oh, goodness me, it must be motorbike day today. Another one going by. I'll put a little bit of brown with, in with that too because I want my bottom edge to be darker you can actually get a flat side with this brush if you flatten it out on both sides so I'm going to just do the bottom edge slightly darker so it shows up a bit more yeah, maybe you've done yours a different color that's okay you can do just brown if you want to like if I grab a bit of brown now on this one at the bottom, it might show up a little bit better. Don't worry if it's a little bit thicker in places, doesn't matter. And then the bottom one I'm just gonna do a little bit more. Again, coming around the corner from there. Even a bit of black if you want to. Okay, so they're kind of meeting up there somewhere. So it's gone off my off my picture. So, and then I'm just going to get some kind of a light. Again, if you've got yellow ochre, great. That's a good color to use at this point. I'm going to put a bit of white in with my yellow ochre, so it shows up. You see, there's different tones in here, so. You can play with your colours a little bit. You can leave a bit of white showing if you want. And I'll just skip that one and put a little bit of... As long as you're covering, because the white doesn't cover that well, so that's why I always start with the white. And then you can put a bit of white in with any colour you're using, because it will help it to cover much better. too much white showing. Okay, nearly happy with that. But you can play with that until you're happy with it. Just might put 
put a little bit of darker edge on this one at the bottom because it's in the shade a little bit more by getting the brown just in places. It doesn't have to be all the way along, it can just be at certain points. Like around here it's a bit darker maybe. You can start off with a dark edge. And yeah. So what I'll do now is put the faces on these seagulls. Or if you do feel you need to go over it again with white, you can do so. I'm going to use my very tiny brush again. I'll make sure it's white. Uh, white. Make sure it's clean. <laughs> clean and white. I'm actually going to grab a bit more white. I think I was thinking of white when I said that. Just to uh, actually give my body a little bit more white. Be careful you don't go outside your lines there. Hmm. Squirted out a bit too much of that. So I'm going to have to wait for this one to dry because there's quite a lot of white in that one. Okay. See how the bird stands out a lot more once you've got another coat of white on. So I think this should be okay to do this. I'm going to get my very tiny brush again and I'm going to dig it straight into some black. Very touch tip of my brush has got black on it. Try not to lean in any wet paint. I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to put my dot somewhere in the middle. It works. Even though that's wet, it should work, no problem. And the same here. I need this eyes a little bit further over. And then I'm going to, again, try not to lean in the wet. And make sure you've got a nice edge on your tiny brush. And then we're going to start from just underneath the eye. Whoops. And I'm going to do a slightly bent, slightly curved beak. And to make that stand out further, you can see I've got a little bit of yellow on the top. So I'm washing off my brush again. I'm going to grab a little bit of white because the yellow will not show up unless you've got some white in it. So um, you can do yellow, you can do orange at this point. It doesn't matter if it's got a slight tone of orange in there, which I think I'm going to do. And I'm going to see if it will work. Because of course, if it's still wet, it might pick up the black. So just go slightly on the top of that and it kind of worked for me so that's good and then I'm going to do this one and then oh hello hello Zoe is my kitty saying hello <laughs> okay wonderful final bit on this tiny painting is just to sign your name in the corner with whatever colour you wish. I try and pick up a colour that's either in there or uh, contrasting. Uh, I might just pick up a black at this point and um, and just put my initials in the corner here very subtly like so. And that is my Seagulls by the Sea painting. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got cold tea now, but I'm going to drink it anyway. And I hope you can join me again on the Social Canvas UK. And as I said, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And you will get notifications of when more are coming up. Um, I hope to see you again soon. Au revoir. Goodbye. Arrivederci.